All right, Dr. Anna. So give us the scoop. Can you please give the women the low down on hormones? This is, you know, the, probably the biggest question that I get as a coach and I can't wait for them to hear your perspective. Can you tell women what is going on with our hormones? Oh man, you know, it is, it's complex. We're beautifully complex, intricate creatures. We absolutely are. And it's a really interesting cycle. And I, as a gynecologist, right, I trained as a gynecologist and I'm trained in hormones and age management and uh, expert in bioidentical hormones. But this is what I would say. It takes more than hormones to fix our hormones because we are so complex. And, and this is where the importance of lifestyle really comes in with whatever diet plan we're on. But as we're aging, our hormones are certainly fluctuating. We know on a monthly basis, our hormones will fluctuate. Mm -hmm. And as, um, as we age, like we reach peak levels of our adrenal hormones, such as DHEA sulfate in the blood, if we're looking at it. But our adrenal hormone DHEA, that starts to peak in our 20s and starts to decline by the end of our 20s and early 30s for sure, in both men and women. And progesterone starts to decline more significantly in our mid to late 30s. And this is our mother hormone, progestation, like pro-life pro-birth. And it is the hormone that, you know, the second half of our cycle, which we call our luteal phase, it, it naturally dips if we don't become pregnant around cycle day 28 to 32, depending on your menstrual cycle. And, you know, you have your menstruation after that decline in progesterone. And so this is how it's designed. But progesterone has receptors all over our body. It's in both men and women. So technically it has the wrong name. And it's all, there are also receptors in our brain, in our bones, in our breast that can actually be progesterone, very protective and rebuilding, rebuilding on a cellular level. And um, there's a lot to progesterone. It's also the precursor for our stress hormone, cortisol, and many other hormones as well, downline being DHEA and testosterone and estrogen, all from our mother hormones. And these are all derived from fat from cholesterol, healthy fats in our body. So as we hit our, you know, progesterone starts to decline in our mid to late 30s, and then we have a um, decline in estrogen and testosterone that follows as well. But what's happening as a gynecologist, these are things that happen. Like in our mid 30s, a client comes into my office and says, Dr. Anna, I have PMS symptoms. I have irritability. I have some breakthrough bleeding of my cycle or my cr I'm having more cramps. And so so I would, you know, like the standard care would be, okay, well, let's put you on a birth control pill and or Prozac those two weeks of that cycle, or we can just put you on it every day if you're having anxiety or depressive issues other times. But for PMS, we typically do it just during that luteal phase, the two weeks before you start bleeding. And so then the patient comes back in in her 40s and she's like, you know, Dr. Ann, I'm still having breakthrough bleeding. I don't like how I feel. I have zero sex drive. Of course, the pill will knock out your sex drive. I have zero sex drive and um, having difficulty sleeping, waking up in the middle of the night. And can you help me? I'm like, okay, well, we can really fix your period. Let's do an endometrial ablation and or a... Um, hysterectomy and let's just stop these problems right now, right? You don't want any more children. So let's just take everything out. You won't have to worry about uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. We'll take the ovaries while we're there, even though they're just fine. And so then the situation happens. Well, she comes back, you know, I have no libido. I'm still waking up in the middle of the night and having a hard time with memory and brain fog. And you're like, well, let me tell you, I've done everything I can as a gynecologist, but I want to refer you to your next best specialist. Here's my favorite psychiatrist. And by the way, here's a divorce attorney. <laughs> you know, it's terrible, right? But Seriously. as I learned in my system and like in my practice and through my own trauma and troubles with my menstrual cycle, as I got to my un the underlying reasons, like that patient coming in now in her mid thirties or earlier at any stage when PMS symptoms, it's like, okay, we detox you. No white, no wheat, no sweet, very little red meat. And basically if you can pick it, peel it, fish it, hunt it, milk it, grow it, then for the most part, you can eat it, right? We want to get to whole foods that look like food, avoid the center aisles, and then let's support our body, a supplement that 
I created for myself out of my journey around the world working with healers. I put them on that Mighty Maca Plus, which is a 30 superfood combination, have them take an omega-3 fish oil, probably need a probiotic, and before too long, add on some bioidentical progesterone. And I went from doing two to three surgeries a week early in my career to only needing to do two to three per year. Wow. Three per year. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Imagine that. And kudos for caring enough to do that. And I know, I know your own personal journey is what led to a lot of this discovery. And I love, I love to share this if you don't mind sharing a little bit, because, you know, sometimes I feel like we get very victimized in our health challenges, but if we can take them and look at them as an opportunity to learn and grow, think of the ripple effect that we can have. Look at the ripple effect that you're having by having to get creative, by going through your own struggles. Do you mind sharing a little bit of that? Yeah, no, I'm happy to. And it is, it's totally true. I think that no matter where we are, what, you know, what could be our next right step? And and if we, once we make it through it, not if, once we make it through the situation that we're facing right now, this diagnosis, this whatever, what a good leader, what a good example, what a good mentor, what a good savior for others that you will be just saving them going through the trouble of many of the steps that we've been yep. through. And I actually was talking with another great person, uh, Dr. Debbie Silber, who does post-betrayal transformation. She has a post betrayal transformation institute and we were talking about this exact same thing say saying that you know um, coming through a journey you know a traumatic journey and being able to help and serve others is really it's a gift all the way around yeah. and it, it never it never would want to repeat that journey at all ever or wish yeah. it upon anyone else ever but what a gift that yeah. we're able to give because we've been through it and being able to look at it that way is in a very generous spirit and, you know, ins inspirational in and of itself. So we can look at that as a, a, a gift and we never wish anyone, like I would say regarding physicians, I never wish another physician to go through the journey I've been on to learn the things that I know. So I am here teaching, teaching, teaching. Yeah. And Absolutely. I was just going to say that like it also, not only does it help other people, but it helps you. It helps you see the beauty in your own situation. So you no longer feel like victimized or that was hard. It's like, it's such a fulfilling feeling to know that what you went through wasn't in vain, that it actually was so necessary for you to fulfill your mission and to, even if it's not your mission, you know, to at least help, if you can help one other person avoid that pain, what a wonderful feeling for you to know that you went through that for something, some good to be brought to the world. So I think that's so beautiful. And that's what you're doing. I mean, this is truly, you know, we look at women, they're so underserved, I think, in health communities. There's not a lot of research, you know, that evolve a lot of women because they're more difficult to study, of course, because we're more complex. And so you going through this journey, which I'd love for you to share just a little bit more, if you don't mind, um, has led to possibility for so many women that are stuck in this, like, well, I guess I got to get everything pulled out because it just doesn't work right. You know? So it's so beautiful. So do you mind sharing a little bit of your, your Victor story, your hero's journey here? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I was 39 and we experienced a very traumatic, um, life experience. And I was diagnosed at that time on top of everything else with um, early menopause and infertility. And I was told I would never be able to conceive another child. And this was devastation upon devastation because we had just lost our son in a tragic accident. And, um, and that took me literally on a journey around the world because here I was, Emory University trained, OBGYN, helped hundreds if not thousands of women conceive healthy pregnancies and have healthy babies. And here I was with yeah, unable, unable to. And when we're given a diagnosis in medicine, early menopause, infertility, your only chance is egg donation. I failed cycle after cycle of the highest doses of injectable fertility meds. And you're faced with like, you know, we don't think, well, how am I going to go about reversing this? How do I get to the underlying reason and reverse this? But that's all about functional medicine. I'd already started training in functional medicine a couple years prior. Mm -hmm. So, but still like, the, where's the hope in that, that situation? Where's the hope? You know, it's like one in over 10,000 chance possibility and usually in younger women. So, um, so that was, you know, again, devastation upon devastation. And it literally did take me on a journey around the world, you know, part of my healing journey. And I wasn't, I wouldn't mm -hmm. say that actually 
um, I planned anything, but in serendipitously met with some amazing healers from Native American shaman to Andean philosophers to a Brazilian uh, quantum physicist, energy, talk about energy and hormones, and you know, in some of the world's leading scientists, and also an Indonesian healer that I think is the same one that was featured in Eat, Love, Pray. Mm-hmm. And um, it was before the book went out. And so I, um, then I, what did I do? I um, met with like some of the leading scientists in Germany, in Munich, Germany, actually, in Israel, in France, in New Zealand. Wow. And it was all like pieces to a puzzle, right? Pieces mm-hmm. to a puzzle. And how did other people in other cultures mm-hmm. cope in this journey around the world? Homeschool, two of my girls at the time, they were in, um, they were seven and 10. So in uh, second and, and fifth grade mm-hmm. and at the time. And, you know, that was a journey in and of itself, man, talk about trying. I was like, I am never homeschooling again. And then we just finished out this year homeschooling. So, (laughs) but, um, so all that to say is that through that journey and learning this, Tara, I reversed early menopause and uh, became pregnant and delivered a healthy baby girl at age 41. And I would say that by the grace of God, restored, you know, restored my health and in so many ways, um, you know, reignited my love of medicine and practice. And I jumped right back into my medical practice. And when I came back and I started integrating these therapies and, um, and to continue the story, part of the trauma of PTSD, which I knew very well, the trauma of losing my son was still there under the surface. I was able to get Mm -hmm. healthy in so many ways, but spiritually I was still struggling. And the underlying physiology of trauma, post-traumatic um, stress, any type of trauma is, is um, working under the surface. Even though I thought I had, I had handled it, I was still work, you know, being a workaholic to compensate. That was the, at that point, a single mom, sole provider. My ex-husband had a traumatic brain injury. I mean, it was like, you know, trauma on trauma at that time. And so at 48, I was really, you know, I was struggling, brain fog, memory loss, running a practice, a concierge business, medical practice. And all of a sudden, I started experiencing what so many of my patients experience, and that is, you know, gaining that unwanted 5, 10, 20 pounds in the perimenopause, but without doing anything different. And that is key, without doing anything different. And I tell you, I, when patients used to come in and say that to me when I was a young doc, mm-hmm. I was quite skeptical. I'm like, surely you're not exercising enough. Surely you're more sedentary. Surely, let me see what's in your your bag and let me, you know, mm-hmm. see if there's some like Snickers bar in your purse or whatever. No, I would never say anything, but I did my workups. But then that happened to me, you know, as turning 48 and 20 pounds overnight. Now I'd been well over 240 pounds at one time and losing that weight, keeping it off for nearly a decade to have it creep on so quickly, it was scary. It was frightening. And that's when I delved into keto and um, quickly hit a wall and became keto cranky or keto crazy, irritable. And, um, and so from that's led me into finding the keto green way, figuring out the keto alkaline is what I call our keto green approach to pull me out of, out of that uh, second deep pit that I had fallen into. Wow. Okay. So we're definitely going to dig into this, but first I just want to say thank you so much for sharing that story with us. It's, um, you know, I, no secret to my audience. I'm a big fan of um, shamans and spiritual healing, and we have several episodes about ayahuasca and plant medicines, and it's all been part of a very healing journey for me. I've also been and through very traumatic life experiences that I now look at with gratitude, like you wouldn't want to live through them again, but so grateful because it propelled me on this beautiful journey of healing that I now get to share with others. And that is just like what you experienced. It's so beautiful that not only you got to experience it, but now you have dedicated your life to helping share that with others that don't have the opportunity to go on that amazing epic journey. (laughs) You know, your eat, pray, love (laughs) journey around the world that ended so beautifully. Like, thank you for putting in the work every day. Cause I know, I mean, (laughs) no, no, I don't know. I don't know the work that you're putting in every day because it's like what you're doing right now. You've been 
you've been given such a pedestal and a voice. And I see why now I see how the universe works. It's just like, Oh girl, thank you for everything you went through and for sharing that with all of us and keeping those, keeping that like work ethic going so that you can continue to share and spread love and, and knowledge with the rest of us. So thank, thank you. you. Okay. So let's get into it then. <laughs> so this oh, wait, keto- did I tell you, I told you, right? Age 41, I delivered a beautiful baby girl. So I reversed that infertility, became pregnant. I missed a big part of the story. And reversed menopause, became pregnant. At 41, delivered this beautiful baby girl. So now I'm I'll be 54 this year and I have a 12-year-old. So we can talk about hormones all day because it is so important we keep those stable. (laughs) Amazing. Yes. I know everybody, I am going to have endless listeners that are like, please tell me, what did you do? What did you find out? So let's, let's shift into this keto green way. Can you explain a little bit more what you're talking about there? Yeah. So definitely, you know, all about keto, right? There's keto dirty and keto clean. And for women, I say that we need to be keto green. We really do have to look at our alkalinizers. And so when I was going, when I was, you know, spiraling down and gaining that weight, basically overnight, completely restricted carbs, very ketogenic diet, but I didn't feel good. And I needed, I was, didn't have keto flu. I mean, I've been in functional medicine. I was really, you know, I had my hormones were dialed in. Again, I'm a bioidentical hormone expert. Hormones are dialed in. So it made me ask, like, why is this happening? What's going on? Why are my neurotransmitters being affected by this approach? And I just did something I tell my patients to do all the time. Check your urine pH. Let me, so I checked my urine pH and I, I was as acidic as I could be because I knew the diet I was eating was much more acidic than what I'm accustomed to eating. A lot of meats, you know, a lot more fats, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm not getting as many of the greens and the crucifers that I was used to getting. Mm-hmm. And I was so acidic. And that was an aha moment for me because I said, my body's inflamed. It's irritated. It's not getting the nutrients it needs. It's not feeling grounded. If it, you know, vibrating at a different energy, so to speak, if you think of acidity, like a city, like New York city, for instance, high energy, high stress, very industrial versus the Amazon jungle or a forest with a beautiful waterfall in the background, very grounding, very nourishing, very solid, right? So there's a different, we need both Mm -hmm. in our life, Mm -hmm. but I was way off balance, but that urine pH, and this is why I say, and actually created, I'm looking for them around here somewhere, urine pH and and ketone test strips to look both at pH and ketones at the same time, because it is magic when we get an alkaline urine pH and into ketosis at the same time. That is truly magic. So what um, I did, I just started adding the low carbohydrate greens, the beet greens that we always like eat the beets, throw away the greens. It's the opposite, you know, eat the greens, eat the beet greens and save the beets for a feast feast day for that higher carb day. Mm -hmm. And so kale, Swiss chard, collards were in the South. So a lot of good collards and then um, cruciferous vegetables to help with you know, or estrogen and progesterone and also gut microbial diversity. Because if we're not feeding, if we're not having a diverse amount of plant foods and good nutrients, micronutrients into our diet and prebiotic, we call it prebiotic or fiber to help with our natural gut bacteria, then what happens is that we get into, you know, we can decrease the diversity of our gut bacteria, which is necessary for detoxification. It's necessary for serotonin production. Over 80% of our serotonin is made in our gut. And also a section of bacteria have a function we call the, we call them the estrobilome for estrogen detoxification. So if we're eating antibiotic uh, foods, like for example, non-grass fed antibiotic injected meat, we are taking in those antibiotics and it is doing what it's intended to do, kill off the bugs good and bad indiscriminately. And so that is further, you know, upsetting our hormonal balance. And so I added these in and I started feeling a lot better and checking my urine pH every time I went to the bathroom, checking my ketones. Really, sometimes you get into ketosis and that bumps you right out of alkalinity. So keep pushing in that uh, urine pH. A urine pH is a vital sign. It is like a, a thermometer essentially for how healthy your body is. And so I also noted that the mornings I would walk on the beach, Tara, go for that morning walk, I would be more alkaline all day. Mm, So cortisol increases acidity of the urine pH. 
And just knowing that helps us temper what I, um, how I can modulate my diet in order to improve my urine pH. So, I mean, it is, it's amazing. We're running our Keto Green community, and this is the biggest discovery process that women are going through to see like how they can incorporate lifestyle and nutrition and nutrients to get both in ketosis and alkaline at the same time. Some do it very easy and some struggle. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, you are speaking my language hundred percent and I, this is my concern. You know, I'm not, I'm not opposed to, you know, the carnivore approach to keto as like an intervention for people with like major food issues and gut inflammation, but I'm like, ah, oh, it concerns me on end. Do you have any, because of that decrease in, in gut microbial diversity. And I have had people who have done the carnivore for a while tell me like, man, it took me like six months to be able to eat normal again after that. Do you have any thoughts on that? I'm curious. I do. I do. I have definitely interviewed some of our keto carnivore colleagues. And uh -huh. I think that's like, if you, you know, have such a messed up gut that you're resistant to everything. Like I honestly, what I've worked on with my patients clinically, I've done a three to seven day fast, right? three to seven day fast, because that's just going to reset. You re-epithelialize the mucosa and that can be very beneficial or just doing like a keto, like our, we have a keto alkaline shakes that are really uh, nourishing for the gut. And you could just do shakes for three to seven days. And clinically, when I've had clients, even with Pseudomonas aeruginosa, I mean, like her gut was torn off. She'd just gotten out of the ICU and was about to go back in. I'm like, before you do, just shakes, water, for seven days. And in three days, she was already 99% better. Wow. And so didn't have to go back to the ICU or, or the hospital at all, at all. But wow. it, that's fascinating to me. That's so fascinating. But I, I yeah, also, beautiful. my skepticism, I'd say, okay, well, you can do it. It seems like a short-term intervention. Remember, men have 10 times as much testosterone as women. So they're going to be in an anabolic state a lot you know, they'll stay, their bones will stay stronger in states of malnutrition than our, our women's will, right? We, it's just true because we have, especially the older we get, less mm -hmm. circulating testosterone and, you know, and, and that's just how we're, that's just how we're made. So I think if like we are so intolerant to so many foods, like that is definitely something to consider, but I definitely be on the walls protocol first. Oh, I love it. Thank you for that insight. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So a lot of people I've noticed like women, they're coming up. So maybe they're like you, they're maybe they're oh, wait, feeling Tara. I'm going to interrupt just because one more thing. Also with carnivore keto, it does matter. The ones that are doing it successfully are really conscientious of what they eat ate. Right. So like yeah. acorn fed Wagyu, right? <laughs> I mean, something like that, because that makes a difference. What we eat, eight, makes an incredible difference. One person can do it. The, they can follow the same carnivore plan, but completely different results because of that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, I think that's so key. You know, people just jump in and if you're, it's just like regular keto too. You know, if you're, even if you're not carnivore, if you're just going and grabbing McDonald's McDoubles and got them fake cheese on it and these horrible quality meat that was, you know, and all the crappy oils and all of this yeah. stuff, you're not going to be healthy. You know, sure. You can be in ketosis. You can be on ketosis in ketosis off freaking vegetable oil, you know, but like, it's not that you're not going to increase your health. And I love that you're putting this priority towards, um, quality of whether it's the meat or the plants, it's all about the quality and that you're actually measuring in the urine pH that the effect that that has. And I'm also very, because I'm a nature lover and that's where I get all of my answers about the body, because I think that's where all the answers lie. All of us are, I say that our, our journey and understanding the human body is cute. <laughs> you know, we know some things that's cool, but nature has nature is what our bodies are nature. They are mm -hmm. part of nature. They get returned to nature when we're done borrowing them is how I look at it. So I love that you're showing also that this connection to nature, what that's doing, how that's manifesting physically in your body by keeping you more at a balanced pH. Do you think that that is because of the decrease in stress from walking in on the beach? Do you think it's because of like the negative ions in the air or the grounding of the earth? Do you have any like lower, definitely lowering cortisol, yeah. but also we know about grounding, you know, mm -hmm. absolutely. We get a lot more than vitamin D from the sun and especially mm -hmm. those sun sunrise walks where you're getting that early morning light, that is medicine. That is some of the totally. best medicine, better than anything I can prescribe on a prescription pad. I guarantee you getting out in nature, 
walking, you know, and definitely water is so therapeutic in so many ways, especially our natural bodies of water. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. I want to hit a little bit more. You mentioned stress with women and how like we can have, you know, so let's say maybe they're doing this, um, this approach to keto and they're like, I feel like I'm being really healthy and I'm doing all those things, but things are still going wrong. How have you seen stress affect hormones and what, what do you recommend for people to do to be able to deal with their stress and get out of this hole that they're in? Right, right. And especially now too, like having the early onset of the pandemic and the quarantine that we have Mm -hmm. been through that we noticed the high levels of cortisol break down our natural healthy boundaries, right? Willpower, we may start eating things that we haven't eaten in years, craving things, thinking things. um, And that is that is a result of cortisol. I would say cortisol is the thief that comes to rob and steal from you. And, and it absolutely does. It's, you know, often in, in short, short amounts and at, on an as needed basis, it is there to save us and protect us, but too much, too long, it is unruly and will create chaos in our bodies. And especially with our reproductive hormones, our bodies will make cortisol over estrogen and testosterone and DHEA, right? So we, I think understanding that is really fascinating. It's really eye-opening for me. And it's been this concept of discovery, but even more so when cortisol goes up and it's up for a while, oxytocin goes down, the hormone of love bonding and connection. And when cortisol is up for too long, our paraventricular nucleus area in the brain will suppress cortisol production. And we get this dangerous state where it's low cortisol and low oxytocin. And so what does that feel like? That feels like disconnection. Like Mm -hmm. I love my husband, but I don't feel love for him. Mm -hmm. I love my work. I don't feel love for work. I don't Mm want to go in anymore. I'm burnt out. I was just at my gynecologist's office today. He's retiring. He says, you know, Anna, it's just not the way it used to be. He goes, you know, all I deal with is paperwork and EMRs and fighting insurance company goes, you know, the, that's, that's just a complete change in medicine. He's been practicing for 50 years, you know, lovely, lovely old man. And, um, it, it just, you know, that kind of stress, like he, he's burnt out. He mm-hmm. finally could, he would be practicing till he died. He loves it. Mm-hmm. Right. But he's completely burnt out. And that's, that's cortisol. That is stress. You know, that is like when we are struggling day after day. And that, that is a result of this cortisol oxytocin disconnect. And I would say, I want it all to be about progesterone. And I'm all about, you know, I, I use bioidentical DHEA. It's in my Jolva formula for, for our lady feminine bits, right? To help with, you know, vaginal dryness and orgasm and, and, you know, clitoral health and also incontinence. And then my progesterone cream. So using bioidentical progesterone and and pregnenolone, another option or prescribed by our physician in an oral form. Those are precursor hormones, right? And that those are very, very beneficial hormones. We want to dial those in and then estrogen and testosterone uh, and as needed. So, that as we're in their menopause and beyond menopause. And sometimes in the perimenopause, absolutely, we need additional support. But beyond that, it's really about these major hormones, insulin and cortisol and oxytocin that rule and master our lives and also our waistline our energy level, our moods, and, and those these are the critical hormones. And what I love about the keto green way of living is that in, in ketogenic diets, it increases insulin sensitivity, hands down. That's why we do well. And we can do well for a pretty good while until you know we don't have a healthy gut, microbiome, we don't have a, um, we're, we're missing some nutrients, we're becoming more acidic, all of those things. I'm not talking about blood pH, I'm really talking about on a cellular level, the dental shifts that can occur. And then um, the alkalinity component, the green component helps with cortisol management because again, it, it goes beyond what we eat, but you know, adding those micronutrients are so beneficial and you're a big advocate of this. So I love what you're talking about because this is huge and especially huge. more so for women. Absolutely. And 
I think like for, it's a problem solver. I like that you've created this keto greens, you know, product because it's a problem solver for a lot of people who are like, okay, like I, I get it. You know, I feel like women, we just kind of get this. We're like, I want all those benefits of keto, but it does kind of concern me that I'm not getting in as many vegetables as I want to. So having a solution for that, that makes it easy like that. Thank you for making that. Cause that is such a, a great problem solver for us as women. And I, you know, I'm a little bit of a hippie and a little bit spiritual, but I feel that the more connected that we are to the plants, the more connected that we are to nature, it enhances our own happiness. It enhances our connection to self, to people, to others. So just even that's just my own personal belief because I am a hippie, but like that gets me <laughs> excited too. Um, because I love knowing that I'm bringing in and more nature into my body. It helps me feel connected. So if you're a hippie like me, you know, that's another way that you can get all the benefits of keto, but you can also be connected to all these foods from nature as well. So well, and herbs, right? Herbs yeah. and, and spices. And, and actually speaking of being a hippie, but I just planted my garden and I was out there the other day. I'm like, I have been neglecting you. Let me just talk to you about what's been going on. You know, oh, it's just beautiful. like, you guys are so great, right? Like, oh, beautiful. thank you, little parsley. I love you. <laughs> yes. And that's how I look at my body too. And I'm sure you do too. Because if you're talking to your garden like that, I know you're talking to your body like that. It's like, oh, thank you so much. You know, even fasting, you mentioned fasting and doing extended day fasting. You know, like when, when we fast, it allows that opportunity for our gut lining to regenerate. And I know that's a big reason why you're doing it. And the way I try to teach people is like, this is a thank you. Thank you so much for everything you do. You know, Dr. Zach Bush, I love, he put this, do you know Dr. Zach Bush? Name is he's, familiar. He's a gut microbiome expert and he um, is all about soil quality. He's an internal medicine doctor that has now gone onto the front side of health like you and is helping people understand how to connect um, their gut microbiome to what we what were always intended to have in nutrient soil quality. So his whole life is dedicated to that. Um, and he said something that I loved. He said, Our, your, your food doesn't feed your cells. Your food feeds your gut and your gut feeds your cells. Your gut lining is where it's all converted. And I think that's so- I love that. Isn't it amazing? It's such a powerful way of putting that. And so what I'm hearing from you is that, you know, when we, when we fast, we're providing an opportunity to say, hey, you know, gut lining, like, thank you for everything you do for me. And I'm going to give you a little break. We're going to have some time off so you can heal and regenerate. And yes, I'm going to be a little uncomfortable and I'm going to be fine. It's your time to shine, baby. <laughs> I'm taking a break for you. So um, I love that you have people fasting. And then on the, on the flip side of that, you're also helping giving them all these nutrients that can then be absorbed into this fresh, beautiful, clean, healthy, renewed gut lining so that they can get that, all that micro uh, biome diversity back and on point. And I actually, you hit, I want to get into neurotransmitters because you hit on that a little bit. So like, I love neurotransmitters. This is a huge part of what I'm obsessed with. And, you know, we've have some research showing that keto is GABAergic and, and can increase GABA and help us to feel more calm. It's like the brakes on our brain. Um, what, have, what impacts have you seen on different variations of keto on how they impact our neurotransmitters or basically our brain chemicals is a way to put it, even though they're made in our gut. I don't know why they get called brain chemicals, but they go up to our brain. Um, what impact have you seen different forms of the ketogenic diet have on, on neurotransmitters? Yeah, definitely. Like the keto green and what I've been working on now with so many women in our groups and our online community, Magic Menopause and my keto green community. What we see really is this is this sense of calm and peace, but it's always keto green. It's never just a straight keto. Yeah. So hmm. looking at that, that's a really interesting. And to get yeah. a look, we'll give you that link for the keto calculator yeah. that we created for like what a day in your life of being keto green looks like. And it's cool. specifically for women based on height activity and, you know, BMI, desire, all that stuff. So, um, and, and so that's an important consideration to think about. But what I I know is this, that as we age and our hormone levels are declining, we experience what I call, we enter into this period of neuroendocrine vulnerability. And I really believe it's like 35 to 55. It's mm. this really vital time period, 35 to 55, that we really have to be sharp and acting on our hormones. And what helps us best to get through this is getting keto green, getting into ketosis, because not only is the use of glucose as fuel for our muscle and even more importantly, our brain, not only is it is is that important 
but it is also um, hormone dependent. It is estrogen dependent and most likely progesterone plays a big role here because we know progesterone is neuroprotective. So as progesterone and estrogen are declining, our brain's ability to use glucose, glucose metabolism in the brain is estrogen dependent. So our brain is basically mm. starving. Mm. It's suffocating. It is being strangulated, right? And so the brain fog, the memory loss, all of these symptoms that I experienced, you know, when I was entering into my 40s and or in my um, late 40s, entering into what I called my second menopause. And, um, and so what happens is that what we do know, and when, and when I switched to going keto, I had the brain clarity. I had that sense of peace that surpasses all understanding, as it says in the Bible. That peace, despite my external circumstances, nothing else had changed. But me, I could respond instead of react. I was more grounded. I was more stable. I was more calm. And that is just, that is huge, huge. because glucose is to gasoline as ketones are to jet fuel and the use of ketones in our brain is not estrogen dependent. It's not hormone dependent. So mm. regardless of what's mm. happening to our hormones, when we shift to ketosis, we're good here. Then we have willpower, we have self-control, we have you know clarity, we can make some really good decisions versus swimming in this fog. And so there's a couple things that I do for women during this time period. One is certainly... Um, it is certainly getting keto green. Absolutely. Again, it takes more than hormones to fix your hormones. The second is a hormone progesterone. Bioidentical progesterone, your physician can prescribe it for you. I've also created a natural transdermal cream with progesterone and pregnenolone in it. And, um, and so that can be used cyclically or on a regular basis post-menopause. And that what clients would tell me, they say, Dr. Anna, I feel like my fog has lifted. A fog wow. has lifted. I feel wow. it finally got my old brain back and I sleep better and wake up rested. I'm like, yes. Wow. Huge. I did not know that the glucose metabolism was dependent on estrogen. That's huge. That's huge, huge for us to understand as women, as we age. You know, I knew that the uptake of ketones into the brain, you know, for men and women, that, that doesn't diminish, you know, glucose metabolism. I think everybody starts to get impaired glucose metabolism in their brain as they age. I mean, that's why and it's like- more yeah, and with more insulin resistance, which makes Alzheimer's and dementia so much more prevalent in women, over two times as prevalent in women as men. Wow. Wow. Huge. That's so big for us to understand as we age. And that's why I've always said, I'm like, if you want to meet a keto zealot, talk to older women, like the older, older women. Like those are the ones that are like, I'm never eating carbohydrates again. Like you don't understand what this has done for me. And that's what, that's now we're hearing why exactly. I had no idea it was estrogen dependent. That is a, such a huge thing for us to understand as we age. Also the progesterone cream that you make, like how do they um, find out about how to use something like that? If they're, do they have to go through a doctor or they can well, buy that from you privately? Yeah, I have some great articles on progesterone on my website. And so okay. if you just go to dranna.com, like drana, D-R-A-N-N-A.com, and search progesterone, you'll find a bunch of great articles on awesome. it. And the product I created is on there as well as Amazon. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So check that out. If you, if that sounds mm -hmm. um, like something that would be good for you, which I, you know, that's progesterone is the one thing that, you know, my clients will say, is it okay? I'm like, yes, <laughs> keep doing that. Um, all right. So what about the, um, the adrenals and inflammation, like how have you seen keto have an effect? You know, a lot of people will worry that, you know, keto is going to be hard on the adrenals or things like this. What are your thoughts on keto and adrenal function in women? I think like anything, especially if you have adrenal fatigue, you know, like getting into ketosis, first you approach getting alkaline, work on alkalinity, start extending your intermittent fasting and, you know, stop your snacking that whatever mm -hmm. three meals, three snacks, the adrenal fatigue world has promoted makes no sense. makes no sense. And I promise it, you will be fine without it. Let's just, and then shift to a keto green lifestyle because that that will make all the difference in supporting your adrenal glands. My adrenal function is better now than it was in my late 30s. My adrenal function without a doubt is better now on its own with uh, you know than in my late 30s. So um, so we can rebuild our adrenal glands and I was flatlined adrenals you can imagine after the stress and trauma and um, 
life journey I've been on that I, my DHEA sulfate was like in the teens at one point and my cortisol was flatlined. I had tried everything so much to get it back into balance. And really the few things that helped is my formula. I have it here. I'll show you this mighty maca plus is from my journey around the world. And we've seen an increase with this formula, this combination of DHEA by 70 to 200% in two months. 70 to 200% wow. in two months. Yeah. Which wow. is like nothing I ever did. Wilson's protocol, everything else wow. that I've tried, nothing got like helped me like this. And so, and, and it's, it's so true. And even now, like with the, you know, the trauma of the pandemic threats and the quarantine, it was a quick, I started to slip down that slippery slope and I just had to pull myself back up, tripled my Mighty Maca Plus, really worked on a three, I did a three day complete water fast and, you know, just pulled myself up and focus on this because I, I know the damage of, of unrelenting stress and we have to nip that in the, in the butt as, as soon as possible. Wow. Absolutely beautiful. Leave it to the plants to heal. Right. I always say, I always feel nature kind of telling me like, I'll heal you. <laughs> just listen. Like if you'll just like let go of all these things that you're trapped in, nature will, nature will heal us. And I love that. I, you know, this is inside out health is obviously it's important to me. So you're putting nature on the inside and look at the health that it's bringing out. It's so beautiful. And I love that you got that from your journey around the world through your own trauma and healing. And now you're being able to help other people heal through that. That is just so incredibly beautiful. Um, yeah, I have a hard time with the, adrenal issues. You know, I think uh, Verta Health actually has a blog article about how um, salt, make, just making sure something as simple as salt is being taken care of can prevent the release of aldosterone and then too much um, adrenaline on a ketogenic diet. So it is about, you know, being on a ketogenic diet is about optimizing it intelligently. And that's what, I mean, you're w way far down that road. It's like, let's actually optimize this super intelligently. Um, I and think test um, don't guess, right? Test don't guess. Check your urine pH. If you're checking your urine pH, it'll tell you, it'll help guide you because not just about the nutrient status, the salts, the mineral salts, you need more salts and the stress level perceived and real stress. Wow. Okay. So let's, let's get into, I just want to talk, um, in closing about your book, your new book, it's called the hormone fix. You guys, it is out. Well, it just came out a few weeks no, ago. The hormone fix came out last year. Now oh. keto green 16 is out this year. Sorry. I meant to say keto green 16. So yeah. So tell but they us are both. this is like that for me, it is like the, my magnus opus, it is a necessary resource resource for, for women really of all ages, but really, really it's, it's continued to be a top book. It's recommended yes. in functional medicine coaching programs. I so. have read it and it is an amazing book and I highly Thank recommend you. it. Sorry. That's why it was on my mind. Sorry. So, so let's talk about keto green 16. Yes. So with Keto Green 16, we take the Keto Green diet to another level. So we really go to essentially a two meal a day program with a 16 hour intermittent fast with food, with amazing recipes, but I really wanted to narrow down the ingredient list. Um, so 16 key ingredient types to focus on, like one is fermented foods like kimchi and sauerkraut. Another nice. is digestive fruit. We can actually have some fruit and stay in yeah. ketosis, but if it kicks us out, we have to reduce it. So, but for digestion, pineapple, papaya, oh. mango, that's my digestive fruit category. And nice. then we have the cruciferous vegetable category and you have fish and chicken and, and grass fed beef as a category, as three different categories. So I really tried to narrow it down, give you amazing recipes and, you know, my freestyle Libre here, I have the continuous glucose monitoring in place and I've been wearing it for over a year um, mm. on and off to monitor the recipes and playing with different recipes, so cool. foods, and lifestyles to kind of figure out what works, what doesn't. So that's where I found, and this is really important for our keto, our, our keto community, especially those that are struggling with hormone imbalance, adrenal fatigue, and or um, weight loss resistance, is that this... Um, you know, when I, I started wearing my continuous blood glucose monitor, I've always like looked for the research to support my vices, one of them being coffee, right? So my blood sugar right now, and I'm an hour after lunch. So it's nice and low, right? Mm -hmm. Nice and low. Um, and she's showing on the screen for anyone listening on audio. It's at 71 right now. 
Yes. Yeah. And a, a little bump with lunch from like, I, I run typically in the sixties and seventies when I'm strictly keto green and it bumped up to just under a hundred for um, my lunch, which was a grass fed burger served on a bed of lettuce with some Asian coleslaw mm. and guacamole. Mm. You know, I haven't so eaten good. yet today. It's like 2.30. So I'm like, oh gosh, <laughs> I heard my stomach heard that. <laughs> so yes. Yeah. You're going to be hungry. So with Keto Green 16, we work with that 16 hour intermittent fasting window. Nice. Oh wait, what was I telling you about the, uh, the impact of, <laughs> yeah, the impact of the blood sugar, even eating a meal that low carb you went oh, to coffee. about 90. Oh, coffee. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I, when I started wearing this and um, I would drink my coffee in the morning, my blood glucose would go up to 20 to 30, po- 20 to 30 points higher. Wow. And wow. that made, that started to make sense for me because sometimes in the morning I'd like be kicked out of ketosis. Wait, I wake up in ketosis. Now I'm out of ketosis, but I haven't eaten anything. I've only had my coffee. I still didn't put two and two together until I started checking my continuous glucose monitoring. And then after a strenuous high intensity workout, Blood sugar will go up too. Glycogen totally. stores to feed the muscles. So necessary, right? right? It, I, you get that beautiful spike and that's okay. That's good. That mm-hmm. flexibility, that metabolic yes. flexibility is huge. Mm-hmm. Huge, huge. I love so that. So coffee could be, a, you know, could be one of those things that keep us from success and keep us adrenally depleted. And we just have to stop it when it's doing that to our bodies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I'm a big fan. I was just talking to my coaching ladies about this morning, like, you know, try maybe green tea or um, yerba mate. They have like chai versions of mate, which is a little bit lower in caffeine. See if maybe you could, if you still want that, you know, experience with your butter and your coconut oil and all that in the morning, you know, do something that's maybe a little bit reduced or possibly even decaf. Um, And that is like, even I had an Uber driver once who was diabetic that was telling me that he found out that coffee was even black coffee was just astronomically um, rising his blood sugar. So it is something for us to think about when we're in that ketogenic state. And then also, um, Dr. James DeNicolantonio has a book called the salt fix where he also talks about how, you know, coffee is a diuretic and it also can deplete us of more salt. So if you're on that ketogenic diet and you're cranking the coffee all day long, you may be doing yourself a huge disservice on your adrenals in the long run, because now you're putting yourself in this high adrenaline state you're also depleting salt that you're not getting back in in a, in a condition where you're already likely to be depleting salt faster, you know, and then on top of it, we could be going in and out of ketosis and I'm with you. And so I love metabolic flexibility. I'm a big like Mark Sisson lover of everything that he talks about. And so, you know, it's okay for us to go kill a workout and have that rise and sift back. And that's what our, that's to me, the whole point of keto. That's to me, the whole point it's to teach our body, get our body back to a place of where it actually should just be. It should be able to go in and out of ketosis, no, like nobody's business. And so that's what, you know, the work that you're doing, I love obviously, cause it's similar to the work that I'm doing, but I love that you are bringing in also the hormone, um, like artillery, you're bringing in the heavy artillery of like showing us what's happening on the back end of things with hormones. So as a ketogenic diet coach working with women, thank you for what you're doing and showing that, um, I can't wait to share your book with my coaching ladies. And, um, I love that you've made it so simple also of like, just, you know, sometimes when people see food lists, I think they don't know what to make. And I say, get creative, you know, but you've given the recipes also, but like, all right, you've got some elk. Well, let's see what you got. Like that's how I love, it's really fun. If you look at food that way and you can release yourself from having to like have somebody show you a recipe and just say, what can I make with this? I have greens in my garden and elk what can I make? It's super fun if we can look at it that way. So, um, I love that you've given them like just these ideas. I obviously you've given recipes too, but also just ideas of foods that they can put together. That's going to optimize a ketogenic diet. So Mm -hmm. love it. Thank you. Yeah, no, I I agree. I'm right on board with you and what you're doing and how you're coaching and like I'm all in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So is there um, anything else that you might share with a woman who's hearing this and she's like, uh, okay. Like, I feel like I've got that brain fog you're talking about, like, and I've tried keto, but it was like horrible for me or something like that. What would you say to the woman who's like resonating with what you're hearing? Where does she start? Where would you say she should start? Definitely, definitely start with either one of my books, honestly, but definitely, you know, we have a tremendous keto green community on Facebook and just a great group of women that are supporting each other and, and going through the journey, but start, start learning and discover 
discovering what's going on with you. So I would say start testing, not guessing. You know, check your own pH. You can get pH paper at any at any a pharmacy. You can get it at my keto pH strips off my store. But you just start testing and not guessing and get that alkaline first and then push into gradually extending your intermittent fasting. And you will start to see results, right? We all will start to see results when we do it this way. And we want to honor what our body's telling us. So discerning, like oftentimes it's discerning what maybe food sensitivities are there that are holding us back. Coffee being a big, you know, could be a big one for you. It was, uh, you know, sadly a big, it has been sadly a big one for me. So Oh, I love it. Test, test, don't guess. I love that. I hope that sticks with us. You know, it's like you can stay here and spin your wheels forever, or you can just find out. And then, you know, Dr. Anna has answers for you in her book. So make sure you check that out. I'll put links to her website, to her products, to her books, everything in the show notes. So make sure you check that there. And again, Dr. Anna, thank you so much. Thank you.